In this video I want to show you how to connect up the open altimeter board to a regulator and the connections to your battery and radio. So I've got my open altimeter board, I have the Recom switching regulator unit, I have a servo extension which I'm going to use to connect to the battery and also to the radio, and then I have a couple of pieces of heat shrink which I've already cut. And so the first thing is to prepare your, your leads. And so like I say I'm just going to use a servo extension and cut it in half. And then I want to strip back the wire. And now really, less is more here. The reason being, you don't want any excess conductor that could cause a short circuit. So I'm just going to strip back really a couple of millimeters, at most, from each of these conductors. Okay, so that's the battery input, and I'll do the same for the output. And so there we go. So really, a couple of millimeters stripped back on each conductor is, is all you want. Right, so now we've done that, first thing we can do with the board is we should install the regulator. And now I've got my cheat sheet from the website, and it tells me here that when I install the regulator into the board, the text should be visible when viewed from the bottom. So this is the bottom. So that means the regulator goes in this way. And I'm going to carefully bend it over like that. And the way I've got it is I've installed it so that it sits flush with the bottom of the board like that. So let me just put this in the vise. And I'll start by just tacking it in by soldering one of its legs from above. flip this over and solder it properly. Okay, so that's our regulator installed. And now what I'm going to do is, if you look on the bottom, it's quite easy to end up shorting out to the regulator connections when you connect the servo leads, and that's something that you really don't want to happen, because that could short your LiPo or kill your power system. And so what I do is I just use a tiny ring of heat shrink, and I'm just going to slip it over the board, like this. And what it'll do is it'll protect those regulator terminals from short circuits. So if we do this, there's no way any of these leads can move in flight and create a short circuit. So I, I think it's a step worth doing. So let me just heat shrink that down. There we go. So, just a little ring of heat shrink to protect the regulator terminals, but still gives us access to the terminals for the cable. Okay, so the next thing to do is to connect the, the flying leads, and so I hope you can see this. I'm just going to tin these contacts, just a little bit of solder on each of these contacts first. You don't need very much. This just gives us a little bit of fresh solder there, that when we solder the wires will make it much easier for them to take. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tin the ends of these, these wires again so that when we make the joint we can make it very quickly and easily. Okay, so that's the three ends of those wires 
tinned. And so now following my cheat sheet, this is from battery, I'm going to install this on the bottom. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this second servo wire because I know I'm not going to use it. So let me just quickly snip that off. For DLG application you don't need the second servo wire. And so yeah, following the cheat sheet, I'm just going to position this. And it's really now that they're both tinned, it's just a matter of dabbing in with a hot iron to to get the solder to jump melt together. And I'll do the same for the hot connection. There we go. And so you can take a look at that. And you see how this little ring of heat shrink that I put on really makes it very easy to install this without worrying about short circuits. Okay, so that's the battery input. Let's quickly do the output. And so again I'm going to tin the end of these wires to make the job easier. There we go, so three tinned wires. And again I'm going to follow the cheat sheet telling me where to put these in and so they go into the top three connections. So I'll start with the ground lead. And again it's just a matter of dabbing down the iron to melt the solder and complete the joint. That's the ground and then the power and then the servo lead. There we go, dead easy. Right, so that's all the connections made. That's ready to go. And so what I'm going to do, before we put the heat shrink around the whole unit, I'm just going to check for short circuits and also power it up and make sure it works. I really think you should always check for short circuits if you're going to be plugging this into a LiPo, because if there is a short circuit with a LiPo, you can end up with smoke really quite quickly. So let me just pop this back in my vise and grab a meter. And so I'm putting my meter in its continuity test mode, which means it will beep when there's a short circuit. And I'm just going to check. So first of all, the two grounds should be connected. Indeed they are. The output and input voltage, nothing. And the two inputs, nothing. And then let's just make, the make sure the servo channel is not shorted to ground or to 5 volts. Perfect. So that looks good. So what we can do is we can now try connecting this up to a battery. So I'll plug a battery in here. And in a second or so, there we go, we get the start of beep. Excellent. So let me just check before we solder it up that we're really getting 5 volts. I just switch my voltmeter under the volt range. And without shorting anything out, be careful. I'm just going to look. Oops. There we go. And so that's all working. So the final thing to do now is just to wrap it up in a piece of heat shrink so that it doesn't short out against anything in your glider. Also this heat shrink, actually, I'll show you. What we're going to do is we're going to put it on so that it extends past the regulator. That's so all we wanted about that long, so we're going to leave these terminals at the end exposed. But we're going to go past the regulator, and that actually gives it a lot of mechanical stability. Otherwise, when you take it in and out of your model, you can find that the regulator gets bashed around and eventually one of those joints will fail. So I think it's worth extending the heat shrink. It also will serve to hold the wires down and provide strain relief for the wires. So let me just turn on the hot air. And we'll shrink this heat shrink down. There we go. So that's the heat shrink shrunk. And the only thing left to do is to cut a hole for the sounder so we can hear it. There we go. And that's all there is to it. So that was for the case where we're using a battery input and a regulator and an output. If you were going to use this with an impact it would be just the same but instead of installing the regulator you'd install a wire link like shown on the cheat sheet on the website and you wouldn't need to install the battery input obviously. So even easier.